Hey guys, what's going on? Quick upload today. I just wanted to share a video. Yesterday I gave a talk um, with uh, within the Startup Sauce community. Startup Sauce is an amazing mastermind with over 100 um, SaaS business owners sharing ideas and thoughts and uh, experience issues, you know, solutions and everything with others through a 24 seven Slack channel and also member talks just like this one. I'm going rogue right now because it's not supposed to get out, but I, I wanted to be able to share this because if that community was to be uh, growing, that would be amazing for everyone. This is an amazing opportunity for you guys. If you own a SaaS business to come in startup sauce and just join the group. Um, and you'll find uh, amazing people inside sharing thoughts and solutions to everything you've been struggling with. So uh, I'm about to share a quick video with you. So I actually took the whole my whole whole presentation. I chopped it down in the, in smaller bits where um, it might be confusing at some point because you won't hear the questions because obviously me going rogue here, I can't share everything that was going on through the other members, photos and, and individuals because I, I didn't quite ask for permission. So please, Ryan, please forgive me for what I'm about to do, but I, I just want to share the, the news for um, the, 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 the mission you were on right now. And I think it's amazing. And I think you should be using this content to drive more uh, business. So if you guys are considering joining an amazing mastermind for SaaS business owners, click the link below or go to startupsauce.com. I'm not paid to say that to you. I don't have an affiliate link. I don't care about this. I just want us to be uh, growing as a community. They've been uh, doing an amazing job at community management, Sonny, Ryan, Bella as well, you know, and all the guys and girls that are uh, part of this mastermind. It's helped me tremendously already just through monthly and bi-weekly calls. Um, it's been an amazing journey. So let's jump to the video. See you guys. Well, it's it's actually what you um, what you need to do with those emails or that uh, like that database. It's always a matter of um, what what you're sending to this to, to those people. This morning again, I received an email. It's funny because it was someone that wanted to help me help my business scale with content. So it's funny, but you know, like it just I don't know. <laughs> Um, but the, 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 the first out outreach was actually sending me a link to book a demo with them. Um, and I was like, okay, but I never heard of you. You, I don't even know where you're coming from. And this is what you're sending me right now. At least give me like warm me up or something. I didn't opt in your list. I know I'm not offended because people, some people get offended. Well, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm a crazy dude, like just gathering like email marketing uh, communication just for the sake of it. Um, but, you know, I, I was like, you know, at least try to give me some tips, just drop me some free stuff, send me some, you know, that's like what the first cold outreach book a demo now so I can show you like take 30 minutes. I'm like, what? You know, I, I got way more to do. Right. So, so. Uh, like every every time I, I I created some cold outreach because when I launched my company I ended up getting my hands on a list for I think it was like forty four thousand contacts in the automotive space like honestly two thirds of these two thirds of these were um, like outdated uh, they changed uh, positions you know all that stuff so I had to filter it down just to make sure I don't get like spam and like spam complaints and all th that kind of stuff. So what I, what I started doing is pretty much just starting sending value. Um, just go from the beginning, right? Like just like free stuff, free tools, free videos, then bringing them on my website and scoring them. So let's say I would give like five points for every uh, email click for from the cold outreach sequence like from 50 points, then I would send them like I, I'd get an, I, I'll get an alert and then, then I can check the profile, check the dealership and try to see, hey, um, you know, this is what we do. If you need more information, let me know. This is my personal email. And uh, much better results this way, because when I reach out, they actually know who I am, even if I call. Uh, you know, today is about, uh, I want it to be a discussion. So at any point, if you have like questions or comments, let me know. Um, because I've been like playing around with content and marketing for a while, but doing content myself, 
uh, it's been more recent. I've been helping my clients do that for years now. And at some point I was like, you know what? I can do this thing. And I, I, I was kind of tired of them having a lot of success, seeing the numbers come in and just not doing it myself because I was too shy to be on camera. I, I thought it was, it, it was hard. It was honestly, when I started, it was like frustrating. I would say, um, I, I, I would get tired and I know I was not comfortable in front of camera and just to speaking to like in front of camera. And, uh, if that's your case, that could like, I hope today it's gonna like this session is gonna help. Um, so I just, I just wanted to take what I know and, or, or what I learned and I'm not pretending to be the expert, like over 7 billion people on content, but I've been studying that I've been doing, uh, content, uh, integrating it to the strategy. So I want to share what I learned. Hopefully you can maybe not make the mistakes I made. So you can help, uh, your, your business scale faster. Um, I, I just wanted to like a few weeks ago, I asked on the group what you guys wanted to discuss, learn, share, you know, so I, I went ahead and did a little bit of a, uh, short list, what we're going to do today. Um, I, I want to cover like content mistakes. I see my clients doing, I see people making online. I, I, I used to do, and I still do myself when I don't, when I don't pay attention when creating content. Uh, motivation was a good thing, um, was something that was recurring from you guys. You like a few of, of you guys told me motivation about creating content was hard. Um, choosing which content, how to prioritize, um, should you use advertising as well in your, in your content strategy, create content, but just for, not for the sake of it, but also to make sure you actually acquire clients and just not traffic. Tracking ideas and topics. This is, uh, I just want to give you a sneak peek on how I'm doing mine. So maybe it's not your style. Maybe it's, it's going to help at the end of the, the session. I'm going to make this uh, document available. It's on notion too. So if you have it, <clears throat> that could be something to get you, get you started and, um, give you a, some kind of a blueprint to uh, save you some time building your machine. And, um, I want to brush up on why content is like building a digital army. Plus at the end, I want to give you uh, the list of my favorite tools, just basically what I've been, what I ended up using over time, trying a lot of software, a lot of, a lot of things. I'm going to show you exactly what I use and why I use them. Uh, just a little bit of background. It's not to brag. It's just to give you like a, an overview. I did my first website <clears throat> back in 99. Um, just did so early because my dad was actually early in the web game as well. I built, I started building websites for him. This is why I kind of built over at least over like over a hundred websites and funnels, um, in many, many industries. Um, I launched my first business in 2010 when I was 23 and, uh, <clears throat> it failed big time. I, I got stuck with a lot of debt and then I went on to work for, um, like a solid agency managing brands, like for Home Depot, GM, Ford, Subway. A lot of Walmart, um, Costco, and a lot of Best Buy too. So a lot of e-com. Um, I ended up like managing and selling over 30 million in ad spend so far. And um, I realized I could at some point launch my own agency. And um, I kind of realized something was really, really missing from agencies and bus businesses like this. It was the education part. Uh, just trying to scale education to make sure our clients knew what they were buying. I felt like somewhere, sometimes they were buying because they had a problem and they were like absolutely looking for a solution. And, um, if like by educating them on what was the purpose and how to actually do the right thing, it would, it would just help retention. It would help upsell and closing ratios as well. So this is why I created Automat Academy, uh, serving clients, um, over 2000 students now are usually, I would say 1500 are, are logging in. Um, and this is my, my, my Trojan horse into the automotive space. If that makes sense. <clears throat> Uh, my goal by the end of this today, I want you to be able to create content, a content machine for your SaaS business and, um, also crush your competition. Just a quick overview. Um, everything for me in terms of content can help, um, your customer acquisition funnel, but also your onboarding process and retention and upsell like, uh, processes as well. It's not only about creating, um, a client for me, content made the right way can help you along the lines, even if the, your 
there you, you already have a client and you want to move them to to the next step <coughs> i want to discuss a little bit of that today just not just client uh, customer acquisition but also here onboarding especially which i think might help you guys um content marketing mistakes to avoid i i've been kind of taking notes about what i see from my clients and if you don't know why you're creating content in the first place it's really hard to have an impact with uh, like on your on your customers because if you don't know which kind of content you're doing your prospects are going to be confused and you probably heard that before a confused mind doesn't buy sorry i'm gonna have a hard time with this um lack of discipline is something that's that's been you know, you know it's it, it's been one of the underlying issues why businesses don't create content it's just that it's not a focus or it's not like an important thing just if i can give you a background like before i was treating content as an extra and not like as the foundation of my business and when i started to treat that as the foundation it changed pretty much everything in my client acquisition closing ratio uh, monthly revenue for sure and uh, you know the value of my business as a whole what else um creating short-term content like i put this here because i see some um some businesses doing like creating content creating videos online creating videos for social media and you could see they're sporadically creating content but they, they won't be able like they won't be able to ever use that content again if you want to do it smart you create a piece of, of content that attacks an issue or like a complaint or uh, a problem that one of your prospects might have and then you can reuse it forever. There's on ads, you could put that on your YouTube channel. It could be part of your, your wiki, your own academy, that makes sense for your own customers and clients. And the way to do that is just to always reuse that content over and over and over again, instead of letting it die, just creating evergreen is the way to go. I, I would like I, I do it, but I came up with a framework. OK, let's say I don't know. There's a new like I did it recently with an like a uh, announcement from Apple. And this is not evergreen. This is not going to be relevant in one year from now. But I found a way to pump out that content super quick. I kind of have um let's say I u I do video and I use Premiere Pro as a um, editing production and um like with for these specific that's not evergreen but still think it has value for my my database or my clients I'll I'll, I'll use kind of um I already did like an intro and outro I just filmed the piece the content piece I put it I plug it in in the middle and I export like right away I want to be done within like 60 minutes if it's something that's not evergreen it's a great question because I didn't want to miss out on these because sometimes these kind of events really drive a lot of attention so you want to capitalize on these like from my opinion at least not that at the size i i i, I i'm at or like if you got like a 10 people 10 person team on content that's okay like to have different like um positions on these but uh, i i i just think it's better for my business long term to create like content that's going to be searchable relevant in two years from now um and that that I'm going to be able to reuse because let's say on my end, I use all of these content pieces on email sequences. Let's say you're, you're, you're signing up on any portion of my website. I'll send you a sequence that matches that, uh, the, like the, the thing you first sign up for outdated or not relevant. I, I try, I can't use it. Right. I can be talking about like, I don't know, like uh, all time high for Tesla stock uh you know yesterday <laughs> you know you know what i mean uh like right now it's 40 percent down since my last six months so if i do that i end up losing credibility and losing momentum i believe if you're just doing it for for fun this is the kind of thing i will do like really quick or i'm trying to teach myself to do more like short videos and tiktok and that kind of stuff um just for practice i mean I would, would recommend you still do it, but maybe a very low percentage of the total effort you were making on, on content. Does that make sense? Should I push content with ads or just do it organically? Because pretty much everywhere you'll go and see people are talking about like organic reach, put con content out and so on. Being from the advertising side of things, I just see it's a good opportunity to push some specific content further with ads and faster so you get you get just you, you just get results questions feedback a lot quicker 
because let's say I, I have a very small following on YouTube or TikTok, then I want to see which kind of which kind of content resonates with my perfect client. Um, I want to get 10,000 views ASAP versus my video taking like a full year to get views, right? So this way I can get more comments, more ideas on what to create for. Let's say recently I did like a, a live recording for a web class around Facebook ads for car dealership. I pushed that content out with ads, with Google ads. And the only goal was to gather more views, more people reacting. I got clients all out of this i uh, out uh, like outpacing my ad spend i got comments i got feedback requesting more video ideas uh which i did and i sent them to the people requesting those videos i i i, I believe this helps me become a, an important figure or you know influencer in their mind when i create a video specific for them not many people do that so i still think i can do it and i i'm responding to a like a proper feedback not just what i think is important but what my clients think is important click fraud is hard to is hard to catch there are some services out there to try to to like to help that but it's um it also depends kind of like business you're in and the um, the size you're at too so Honestly, this is this this is hard question because you can always like in terms of campaign management, you can always isolate. I try to build, especially when I'm starting out with a new, let's say a new me, not new media, but new business. I, I try to explode every like uh, like keyword group in smaller groups so I know what's what's wrong. If that makes sense, because if you create like one campaign and one keyword group with, I don't know, 50 keywords. You're going to have a hard time to see what is driving. You can always use the 80 20 rule um, in advertising as well. What drives the bulk of the, the traffic and what actually works at the end. And you might be surprised on what's the, the volume and what's the lead generation por portion of your of your campaign. Yeah, there's uh, two or three major ones. I think ClickSees is one of them. I'm not sure. Um, you can always uh, try. There's a few others I know there. But like Google is already doing a portion of that. Um, you can always do a better job if you're really geo-targeting correctly. Let's say you're targeting like really like smaller, like directly cities versus small in United States. If you're targeting you, like the country as a whole, it's going to be easier for like bots like these or hack like I would uh, they're not hackers but um, companies like that to exploit that 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 portion of your campaign versus if you're targeting Seattle, New York, Chicago, um, San Diego, it's going to be harder. Um, like the the chances are they're not going to be everywhere, so it might be just a good idea. Also, if you want to uh, help you travel with business expenses, you can always target some portion of the continent you'd, you'd rather go. Okay, so I, I just wanted to illustrate what I see content marketing if you do it as like with on purpose or once in a while, because I just think you're going to attract like a few clients once in a while if you don't don't create a lot of content, because in the end, I, I always refer to content creation and as building your own army, just because every single piece of content is gathering views and doing conquests on your behalf when you're you're sleeping or you're not attending to it versus for a good amount of time, I, I was doing cold calls and sales uh, back in my old agency and I couldn't I could only speak to so many people uh, in a day, right? They were busy, you know, they didn't want to talk to me then i started shifting like i gathered everyone in my in the in the list i could work with and um i started sending email cold outreach to email and then when i would call they would be already warmed up they knew what company i was working for they knew my name versus before they would say who are you again what's your what's the name of the company it made a huge difference on how fast i could acquire new clients and i just kept on going video is just uh, unfair advantage to be honest put podcasts into that if you push the right content like people are naturally attracted to you like this i just wanted to put like a cool image on uh, whether you 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 would you rather fish with a fishing boat or just uh one of these here i i did a quick graph if you were to these are like four different businesses okay this is a business that's been doing like once every two months a piece of content versus here once every week twice a week and four times a week over the span of one year the amount of views and the amount of 
content pieces, there's a world of a difference between those because not only you'll have, you'll gather more views in a day, it also has a compounding effect just because when you get to a strong social pre presence, um, people just catch on one of your videos, they watch two or three more and then they subscribe, they get the future ones. It's just, it's a hockey stick to be honest. And um, it makes a huge difference in your commitment and your acquisition channel um, if you commit to create more content over time. And what I did when I started to shift towards that model, but you know what, what if I took an appointment with myself every morning from Monday to Thursday to just create content. So this helped me structure the ideas. I built my, my notion board using this strategy. And over time I, I get to have a place to like kind of dump ideas. I'm going to cover in, in like in the future content pieces, videos and stuff, uh, over time, let's say I'm going to think about something on Wednesday night at eight, just going to take a quick note. And then I know I can structure it in my board where I all filter by priority. Is it, I got to answer a question. Is it evergreen or not? Because if it's not, uh, it, it used to get, it, it used to get deleted automatically, but now I just delete it, um, myself. But uh, this, this, it's just the, the point I'm trying to make is here is there's a the huge difference on your army here. It's um here's at least two things I would I, I would do. Uh, well, first of all, do you have any any types of call to action within your audio podcast? Like, uh, like, is there at any point that say, hey, by the way, if you'd learn to learn, if you'd like to learn more about this, go to w triple w blah blah blah, or nothing at all. What software do you use to distribute your? Um, I'm not a yeah, I know Anchor. It's um, I'm not aware. Can can you do like um because. I use Buzzsprout, but I know others do that as well. You can actually insert ads uh, in front of your podcast or at, at the end, depending on the software you use. Let's say this month you could, uh, you could, you could have any, like you could choose to have in July and August, a specific promo and it's going to air on uh, the total of your 170 episodes. And then you, if you change it on in September, it's going to be different for all of them as well. It's not going to stay from the, the older one, if that makes sense. I, I don't think so. Anchor is different because Anchor actually. Um, there's a few, because in a way anchor, like the way it's built anchor.fm actually owns your content versus other platforms. So you, you're not allowed to do as much, even if you try to pay. Um, but it's different that at least it was the case when I checked maybe a year ago. So that might have changed, but anyways, um, that would have been a, an easy solution. Uh, let's say in the, like in the next ones, what, what I do, do you have an email list on your end or not at all? What I did is I I'm hosting my last 10 episodes on a specific webpage. And when I do my, when I do my email outreach, say, Hey, by the way, the new episode is out. And I, I try to find some kind of a clickbaity, uh, email title just to make sure because with email marketing, you get a first step is to make people click because if they don't click the rest doesn't matter and then i just go very short and sweet hey by the way uh this is what the issue we discussed in the in the, in the podcast and then the link to the podcast is actually my website and on the the web page there's the podcast but also a call to action i choose so that might be one of the the, the things to do and if i were you my my call to action was would be a uh, would you be interested in getting a you gotta, you gotta give something else right um if you want to draw people towards the middle and bottom bottom of the funnel uh, maybe a you know, like a kind of a web class webinar like cheat sheet about something that's relevant to what your product does um, or top 10 tools for that kind of stuff or like you got to give bonuses to have people move towards the middle of the, of the funnel and then from then i would try to start pitching slowly uh in the e in that email sequence um about what your product does is so uh, 10 ways or 10 issues we see from our clients and every time you are the solution, obviously, uh, I'm not sure how many products you have, but maybe you have one product, but you help different kinds of people. So you ultimately you have to have a funnel per persona. If you build funnels towards the problem, the specific issue your product, ha like your, your, your customer has versus the solution of your product, uh, it gets easier for con conversion, especially if problems are different from, pe from person to person. And as your business goes more complex, I know it's mine. Let's say uh, I work with a lot of car dealerships or other businesses. They want to do advertising so advertising with what what's your problem what do you want to sell used cars finance new cars it's a different approach every time some of you guys uh 
like uh, the main theme that um, you guys wanted to see was motivation. Um, maybe it's because most of us we're shy, right? I I've worked with a lot of clients doing trying to do content, and I could I could see them they would go through fire not to do content, right? So just because we're as humans, most of us are shy or we're not comfortable in front of the camera. We don't like our voices. It's all of the above for me. But at some point, you, you know what? I said, you know, screw that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I can, I'm allowed to uh, to swear on startup sauce. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to do this thing. And then as you keep going, you you, you kind of see what's what's working. You start to see signs that, that you, you, you're you actually attracting your clients. Because what what's cool about content is that if people keep watching you and they get in touch with you, they all, they all, you already know they like you and they like your business. If they hated you, they would leave you alone. Right? So that's, that's, what's good about it. And, uh, in our collective markets, like hate is not that much of a problem, uh, versus like mass social media where people are just like saying stupid stuff in comments. You know, when you get B2B SaaS, people are educated. They don't throw shade so much, you know, they just ignore you. They don't like you. So then you try to see, uh, you can keep, uh, keep going and gather more uh, real fans if that makes sense. So if like anyone, anyone here, anyone is here right now, then we have excuses like my mic is not good enough. My cam is not good enough. My background is not good enough. You know, my lighting is not good enough. I'm Australian. I'm Cana Canadian. I, I like insert all the above. What else? What else? Any other, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's funny you mention that because I, I'm the same. I started my, started Autobahn Academy saying, you know what? I'm going to build like super high quality. Or so I thought training material that I, I'll hide from anyone else because I don't want them to steal my style or steal my content, right? And what ended up happening is that I had no one that knew me and all that content slept for, I would say years. Some, some of, the, some of it is still sleeping with barely 20 views inside my, my own, uh, LMS, right? So it doesn't matter. At the same, uh, about at the same time, a competitor of mine, he's more towards the sales and he's a total like machine, but he started doing one video uh, per day on YouTube. Result, he has a 40 million a year company these days, 50,000 um, subscribers now, or like 40. And um, he's doing basically 1 million a month from people just signing up on his seminar, flying to his office. And, um, you know, it's, it's like his number one source is YouTube. He's getting... 10, 20,000 views per day and he's a reference. So I just think it's uh, it's, it's a mistake we tend to, to do to keep everything for ourselves for many reasons, but like reach is, it's much more powerful than to, um, to create clients. That's what I've learned the, the hard way, at least that's for sure. And I think it's pretty much the same thing for you. I, my, my whole master plan was, you know what? I'm going to build content. I'm going to charge for it monthly. I'm, there's no way I'm going to be doing as much money if I do it all the way on YouTube because it's not, it's going to be free, right? Um, big mistake, big, big, big mistake because at some point you gotta, when you start at least, I think, and it's, I, I say start, but it's could be like a lot further down the road. You can actually just go where your people, your, your clients gather at first, find where your clients are at the moment and where to hang out and join the party instead of inviting everyone at your party. If they don't know you, I guess that that would apply to college parties. I would, uh, that would apply to business, everything. Um, I just wanted to add something about that here. Uh, the motivation, the, the excuse, um, you know, at some point when I, I said, fuck it here. Um, I, I, I just remembered it all doesn't matter to be honest, like whatever you save something. I, I, at first I referred to that as saving something into the cloud or something, because I, I was scared of how people would uh, judge what I say, would it be right? My ex coworkers, my camera was not okay. My voice was not okay. I said, you know what? I'm just a bag of meat floating at 65 miles per hour, you know, in space, nothing, you know, what's, what's the point of just holding back on that. So I'm, I, I just, I don't know if that could help you to uh, like see it this way or just, you know, you find it scary or something, but, uh, th that's the truth. So just quick recap before we jump to the funnel building and stacking, um, what comes, uh, what got me going? Like I said, my clients were, uh, got richer from what I was working with and I, I was the guy pushing and educating them on content. So I got kind of pissed off. Um, like, like towards what you were saying with podcast, 
I, I don't know if I, I told you guys that story. I got a lead at some point and uh, I called the guy back and he's like, wow, you're calling me back. I'm honored. So I was like, what do you mean? He said, well, I, I watch all your, all your stuff. I listen to all your podcasts and I didn't expect you would be making the call. So I kind of realized how powerful <laughs> was the content game at that point because it took me like six the, the demo pitch took me six minutes to close it was a six thousand dollar client yearly straight profit so i was like you know what maybe maybe there's something to do with that content and podcasting you should see what he was referring to it was like basic content on linkedin honestly i i got much better from like since then but it was enough because most people don't do it one percent of anyone one percent of the population is creating content right now especially if you go on linkedin nobody's creating co content because everyone's scared that their employer would not be in line with what they're saying so people hold back in turn when you have a business or your business and you can have freedom of speech you should just totally use it referring to what we were saying before um i treat this as uh i i, I like to create a funnel to be able to address a specific customer of mine let's say um i don't know you have a SaaS business and you have three different products you should have in my opinion a strategy built around those three products and not only one because um maybe you have an coin uh, like a like a portion of your product that drives accounting another that drives i don't know marketing and something else you should be speaking in line from end to end from advertising to organic reach to your closing page or your sales demo page or your presentation you, you should only speak about that because if you try if you try to go too wide uh, saying that you do everything. I, I, I just found over time that it will hurt the sale more than help because you that's that, that basically stalls people. They don't make a decision because they kind of realize they got other issues or they start comparing your tool with others when they didn't they, they didn't need to. Here's how, how I see it um, in order to drive more awareness from top to bottom of the funnel. Um, you know, social media ads, I like ads because I get to see feedback and see what kind of creative and ad copy works. I created one two weeks ago for um, a specific program I run for dealership. And I put, I think, 10 different creatives and that text combinations. And turns out two are working really well and the others not. So I just killed the eight others. And then I know exactly what kind of pitch I need to use in my emails, in my future content. And I try to beat them. Um, in terms of um, you know performance same thing for youtube videos i uh, i'm trying to do more and more 10 minute videos web class with offers when i tend when i do web classes i use a a framework for a webinar um always the same thing i want to do more and more of these because these are the most powerful when it comes to selling products um this is the one i i'm i'm, I'm still pushing through ads and i've gotten like many many clients already so i know the roi is positive for that specific funnel Obviously, like we we're discussing with the, the podcast, uh, lead magnets is to help you draw people towards the bottom of the funnel with like most uh, more um, like better offers um, with actually actual call to actions to move towards the next step. I use a lot of email because it's free. It's easy uh, and you, you control that versus everything else social media it's a little bit harder since you don't have control over everything and even like linkedin outreach i don't think it's as powerful as email and um my ultimate goal obviously is to sell but is to automate the whole process i try to do one funnel a month so this way i can have something that's running on the side and then i can start creating another one next month um as this one is completely from ads to cold outreach finish uh with minimal input and maximal output and this is my goal here. If you if you really like wrap your head around creating a funnel that when that works that sells your products with really really minimal input, you can quickly address other funnels and other parts of your products or other like potential customers in your in, in your industry. And obviously, this helps with revenue as well. Think about it uh, like uh, we as satellites here. Like every piece of content is pushing people towards the next step of content. If you're like, if you have a set of, of, of content pieces and podcasts and, you know, snippets and all that kind of stuff that warm up people, then you have to have a next step. Otherwise it's a little bit of um, a missed opportunity to keep uh, people like, like to push them towards the, the bottom of the funnel, because the only reason we're doing content and creating more building an online army is to create most more customers. At least I think that's the, 
what's important about you guys like to you guys if i'm not if, if, if i'm not mistaken i'll be honest i i used to think webinars were complete nonsense and just crap on a marketer standpoint i, I you know we're, i've been I, i've been doing marketing and ads for a long time and i i see the gimmicks and a lot of people are using gimmicks but a lot are also providing real content so if you do like the way i i, I started doing webinars is to actually educate but also purposely leave out some information or solutions uh you can call me evil but that's that's how it's done um so if you purposely leave out some information because obviously you can't be covering everything that forever you know in 30 minutes or 45 minutes some some webinars are two hours but i think it's a lot it's impossible so you got to leave out something else and this is your call to action to a specific offer whether it's uh you know you're exposing the problem uh, towards the webinar and uh, the offer at the end is your product or is a demo or is a different piece of information like if that's only built for these guys um found a lot but when you're done you actually your old funnel is is complete and then if you're able to get people to buy entirely online then, then it's much easier it's really important how you have to educate and show your expertise and show like a per like uh, expand on specific subjects but you got to leave out something because if you go ahead and ex explain everything, uh, you're just going to have people do themselves what you want to sell them or you're going to miss out on the people who can't do it. Because at the end, you know, they're like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I could share actually the, the format I'm using for, for webinars um, and it's working really well. Like a proper webinar from A to Z will take me like 12 hours. Scripting, doing the slides, doing everything, recording, uh, editing would tend to take 12 hours, but, but then it's done. And um, I, I've done it for clients and I, now I'm doing mine. What I've come to do with my, my highest performing uh, blog articles, because before doing video, I was, I was doing more blogs because I have felt more comfortable doing that. When blogging, it's called it's called the skyscraper technique, I think. First, you search, let's say you can use a tool that's called Keyword Finder and say just you want to you want to get volume for three to five different search strings that would be relevant to your product. And then when you find what's actually the highest volume and lowest competitor uh, competition, especially if you're starting out, um, you just can go and take those same five um, keyword strings and see what's ranking number one to three for each Google page then your your only goal is to beat those pages so what i do is i'll click on these pages i'll gather what they're talking about and my goal is to provide more information i do i want to do better images sensitive text so let's say there's a one paragraph on one idea i i do three um i check you know when you search on google you see there's a box with questions you know you can uh, toggle on and off you know what i mean if you use if you do content around those five questions and you actually put these questions in your blog post that, that will help you tremendously because these questions are related to the volume of, of questions people are asking Google. The, this is what I've done since I've been uh, doing blog posts and I, I, I've been able to rank. You got to be patient though, but fairly shortly, three to six months, um, will rank anywhere from top three in the Google searches for specific searches, drawing like proper traffic, proper conversion as well. Um, always w at least one call to action button in your blog post uh, to get people further down the line. Honestly, I've been just doing that, not, not even backlinking and stuff and it works. I, I guess I'm niche enough. When you're niche enough, you can do that. I'm not sure if you, if you go, let's say in mortgages or something you can do thanks but um all right good so i hope you learned something today if you did so if you learned something today make sure you subscribe to this channel because i want to share more and more marketing strategies more content more video content marketing uh, tactics especially for SaaS owners because i own a SaaS business myself part of what I'm offering to my clients is a SaaS business. So I just want to make sure I can share what's actually going on in my business, in my head also, um, because I want to share the, you know, the bad and the good, make sure you don't make the same mistakes as me. I, I, I've been big on marketing, advertising and everything. I I'd like to share more with you guys. So if you'd like do yourself a favor and please drop a comment below on what you have been struggling with in terms of marketing or content marketing within your SaaS business. There's no wrong questions please ask away and i'll make sure to answer your your comment but also this feeds me to drive better content and you create videos i love to pay comments and build um just create videos answering to these comments if you do please make sure you subscribe once again just make sure you get alerted when i get the video out for you